Hello everybody, it's Maurice Fury, and uh, thanks for joining. <clears throat> Today I want to discuss something a bit different, which is the uh, method of connecting a multiple of batteries to a multiple of inverters. And what I want to do is evaluate three what are called hypotheses, and these are methods that uh, people say you should use. And uh, I want to analyze them um, given a set of criteria which we'll set and uh, then see which one uh, works and which one doesn't work. Right, this is an example system. And the reason why I picked this is because there are, first of all, there's eight batteries in a stack. Um, <clears throat> and then the um, then there's uh, three inverters to the right and three inverters to the left. And what you want to do is you want to have the same voltage, the same current, and you'll see the same negative voltage on each of the inverters. And I'll explain later uh, why we chose those as criteria. Right, so let's first of all look at this example and just depict it as a diagram. First of all, we take the top four batteries and we create a bus bar on the positive side by simply linking the positive terminals of the batteries together. Then we do the same on the negative side and then we take off the positive and we take off the negative. Uh, oh, the, the, we take off the top side there and the bottom side there. So now between point E and point F, if you look at the path length through each of the batteries, they go through the same number of links. So you've got an equidistant or equilength cable connecting all these batteries in parallel. We do the same for the bottom four batteries, uh, and then we have an equidistant cabling between point G and point H. The reason why we do that is that we want to use more cables in parallel. And you'll see now how we then connect further to achieve the four batteries in parallel. So then you connect from point E to point B. And you connect exactly the same cable from point E to point A. Point A is the left-hand side uh, inverters, a common point there. And point B is the right-hand side inverters, a common point there. So this is what you do for the positive. And then on the bottom four, you do the same. You connect from point G to B and point G to A. And all four of these connections are the same length. And then on the negative, you do exactly the same. Now that gives you what I called an equipotential point. In other words, as if it is a single battery. It gives you all eight <clears throat> batteries in parallel, and they, um, they then present themselves as a single battery at point B and D, but the equivalent point on point A and C. So that battery and this battery is the same battery, and it's got the same cable lens connected to the two batteries. So now you've split it, into the left and the right. Uh, all cable lengths are the same and you've got eight batteries in parallel. The next problem uh, is a bit of an interesting one. If you've now got these equivoltage points, point B and D, uh, then from there you connect to the inverters. And I've just shown this as sort of three links and three positive links. And also, you need exactly the same arrangement on the left-hand side to the inverters. So, how do you connect those? And that is an, uh, quite an interesting uh, question, which we will analyze now. By the way, um, you'll see that what I do is I create a single point. Now, in this case, I had eight batteries, and I condensed them into a single point. If you have one huge battery, which you buy from some manufacturer, a couple of hundred amp hours, then of course you've got exactly the same effect. You don't have to go through all this cabling because this is inside the battery. 
okay? But the bottom line is you got a single battery there and an equivalent, 100% equivalent single battery there. Right, so let's look at this. Now that you've established those equivoltage points from the battery, a positive and a negative, you then connect a cable to the inverter on phase A, or phase 1, whatever you want to call it. That's the positive cable and the negative cable. On phase 2, you connect the positive cable and the negative cable, and the same on phase 3. Now, the cable here, you will see I depict that as a resistor. And the reason why it's in a resistor is simply because that is the effect of a cable uh, within the system. Um, <clears throat> and then you have your three inverters here. Okay. And now I'm going to look at the goals or the requirements. First of all, <clears throat> you want the battery voltage on the inverters to be the same. You want the battery current to the inverters the same. And the most important one is the negative battery voltages. And you see here the comms earth, and that's a critical part. They must be the same. Now, some inverters use the negative voltage or the negative point of the batteries as a earth for the communication. And you can blow the communication chips in the inverters if these voltages start differing. Because then you get streams within uh, the negative uh, and it goes through the driver chips of the communication and it blows them. So this is the big thing that we want to prevent. Right. So now there's three hypotheses which I said they are sort of three ways that you can do it in, uh, which some people believe in and others uh, don't believe in. Okay, the first hypothesis is to make all the cables the same length. The second one is the positive and the negative on each phase must be the same, but the phases differ. We're going to look at this again, so don't worry if you're not sure you're getting exactly what I mean by this. And then on all phases, the negatives must be the same. The positives must be the same, but the positives and the negatives can differ. So those are the three methods that you can use to determine the cable lengths. Right. So let's look at the first one. What I've done <clears throat> is I set an example here and I said, right, let's say that the phase... Uh, the equipotential voltage, in other words, the, the voltage where we've reduced the battery to a single uh, voltage point, uh, that the voltage there is 50 volt. We just use it as an example. We say the power drawn by the inverter is 5 kilowatt. Okay. Then we have to determine the inverter current, which will result in a balanced system. In other words, if you have the voltage across there, the voltage there, and the voltage there, the current must be such that this adds up to 50 volt, and that the power going through there is 5 kilowatt, the power, through, um, the power measured on the inverter. So uh, what we do is we use a Newton-Rapson, for those that understand uh, what Newton-Rapson is. Um, we use that to adjust the current uh, up to the point where the battery voltage, um, in other words, the system is balanced and the battery voltage is 50 volt. And uh, uh, yeah, it's 50 volt if you add up that voltage, that voltage, and that voltage. Um, so yeah, that is 50 volt. And then we see what is the current to achieve that. And we do that through a Newton Raptor. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is the positive resistance, in other words, R1 and R2 on phase one, instead of putting in a cable length, I've sort of done a rough calculation and said that if you use a 35 millimeter cable, uh, more or less, uh, I can't remember how many meters, but uh, you come to a resistance. And the resistance is what is important when you do a circuit analysis. 
So I said, right, let's say that the cable resistance going from the equivoltage point to the inverter is 0.002 ohm, and everything, all six of them, in other words, phase one positive, phase one negative, phase two positive and negative, and phase three positive and negative, they all 0.002 because all the cable lengths are the same therefore these six values are the same and then uh, we did the newton rapson um, we solved that there to make sure that the uh, circuit is balanced then we get a result that the inverter voltages are all the same the inverter currents are all the same and the comms ground voltages are all the same now, there's no surprises here because we have all cables the same length and therefore you would expect this to be totally the same across the phases. So let's look at hypothesis two. The positive and negative on each phase is the same, but the phases are different. In other words, you have, uh, let's say you're closest to inverter one, you have a, a short cable pair to inverter one, but the positive and negative cables are the same. So I depicted that by saying 0 0.002 and 0 0.002. In other words, this resistance is equal to that resistance. The second inverter may be further. So now you have 0 0.004 ohm and 0 0.004 ohm, positive and negative cables the same to phase two, but it's longer than the ones going to phase one. And then again, the third phase, the inverter might be even further. So you connect it uh, with two longer cables, that cable and that cable of the same length. So I said 0.006 ohm and 0.006 ohm. Uh, then we uh, solve and balance the circuit use, using newton rapson And this is the result. The voltage <clears throat> on, that, on the first inverter is higher than the voltage of the second inverter and that's higher than the voltage on the third inverter. So th the voltages here is high, lower, lower. Now to make sure that you still got five kilowatt on each inverter, you then have the inverter current and you can see the inverter current on this inverter, it goes up on the second inverter, it's 101. And on this third inverter, you've got an even higher current to make up for the lower voltage and still result in five kilowatt. Most important, you now got the common ground voltage. You see at that point there, which is the comms ground, you've got 0.2 volt, 0.41 volt, and 0.62 volt. That is relative to this negative battery voltage that we've established. So this does not work and you might as well use a random pair of cable because, or random cable lengths, because the voltages aren't the same, the currents aren't the same, and this equipotential point that you're hoping for is not the same. Right, <clears throat> so let's look at a third method of doing it. So you're saying on all phases, the negatives are the same length. In other words, that cable and that cable and that cable, the three of them are all the same length. And then the positive, that cable, that cable, and that cable are the same length. Um, but these three lengths being similar doesn't have to be the same as these three lengths. So that's depicted here by 0 0.004 on each of the phases for the positive resistance. Uh, so we're saying that this cable is twice as long as these three cables, and that's 0 0.002, 0 0.002, 0 0.002. Then uh, we solve the balance, the circuit using newton rapson and the results are then as follows. The inverter voltages across all three inverters are the same. The inverter current across all three inverters are the same, and most important, the comms ground voltage at points A, B, and C are the same. So this is probably the optimum method in terms of saving cable, and in terms of, um, well, it depends on your physical arrangement. Um, but this one will work extremely well and save you cable. Right. So in conclusion, all cables the same length. It works well as expected. 
And it could be the optimum if the cable wastage is fine, because you don't want to use unnecessarily long cables. Um, and then you, you've got too many losses in the system. The positive and the negative on each phase being the same, but the phases differ, that doesn't meet any of the requirements, so you may as well use random cabling. So this is a no-no uh, method. And then on all phases, the negatives are the same and the positives are the same, but the positives and the negatives can differ. It meets all the criteria. And in probably most cases, this is going to be your optimum arrangement. So guys, there it is. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, you know, you're always welcome to contact me and uh, we can take it from there.